Comcast connects Washingtonians to moments that matter. Everything we do is to help our fellow residents stay connected to their families, workplaces, schools, entertainment, their world, through the Internet. We're dedicated to serving our neighbors and working with nonprofits, businesses, and cities to create equitable access to Internet and technology for communities statewide. Thank you for joining us for The Digital Divide for BIPOC Small Businesses with Pamela Banks and Jackie Christian, moderated by DM Lee. Before we begin, we would like to thank our tech and economy track sponsor, Comcast. Comcast is committing $1 billion to support 50 million people from low-income communities nationwide with tools and resources they need to succeed in a digital world. We'd also like to thank our founding sponsor, the Carrie and Linda Killinger Foundation, well, welcome everyone to a special session of the Crosscut Festival. This panel is called the Digital Divide for BIPOC Small Business. BIPOC meaning Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. This is an extremely timely conversation to have today, um, but we not only want to have a conversation, but to share with you what is being done, what are business owners continuing to experience, and who are some key players taking these challenges head on. So for this discussion, we welcome Pamela Banks, Director of Recovery and Equitable Investments for the City of Seattle, of 617 Salon, located in downtown Seattle. I'll be your moderator. My name is DM Lee, the Director of Community Impact for Comcast NBC Universal here in Washington, and a proud partner with the City of Seattle OED, as well as many of the chambers and nonprofits probably viewing this session today. So we know it's been an unprecedented time for all small businesses um, during the pandemic. And for small businesses whose owners are from marginalized communities, the ongoing pandemic has been devastating. And there are more hurdles to access the same resources, right? There are language barriers, there's digital literacy and technology gaps, and there remains to be a, a lack of understanding of how and why BIPOC owned small businesses are having a different experience. And for some of us at the Office of Economic Development, Comcast and many of our chamber and community partners think it's, it was clear there was a unique need um, early on. So we all rolled up our sleeves and, and got to work. But I think before we, we hear about what has been done so far, let's first hear from a small business owner right? because they understand about their experience, I think the, the better we can figure out a way to, to recover together. Right? So Jackie Christian of 617 Salon, located in downtown Seattle, I'm trying to give you a shout out. Um, thank you. Salon, everyone. Um, welcome again, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having as me. As a owner, how has the last year impacted you? Um, how have you dealt with these waves of, of challenges? When the pandemic hit, we had just celebrated one year in business. Mm -hmm. So for us, um, it was a very frightening time and it made me readjust my business plan, totally readjust my business plan. Um, I had to learn how to pivot and pivot quickly. I think one more question for you too, Jackie, is this is such a divided time right now um, and it's so easy to, to villainize one another. And, and I think businesses are also villainized and big and small. And I think it can, it can stop us from working together. Jackie, to you, what is one thing the public may not understand about how businesses really contribute to our communities? Oh gosh, where do I begin? You know, uh, small businesses um, create jobs. Um, I think that you know, I'm uniquely located in downtown Seattle. And when clients who would not normally come to the city, when they do come to an appointment, they always say, especially when the weather is beautiful, like, oh, I'm going to head down to Pike Market and get some flowers. So it just keeps pouring into the community. And so for me, um, small business is the backbone of this country, you know, and most of us who are small business owners, we, you know, we went into this thing just praying that it worked and it, you know, it creates jobs and um, 
it is absolutely the backbone of this country. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jackie. Um, and Pamela, folks may or may not be aware that the Office of Economic Development has been closely engaged on these very issues that Jackie was touching on. And you all you are doing so in partnership with chambers and business owners and nonprofits. Um, you have tremendous civic and community based background, having worked at the city, um, been CEO of the Urban League, and now in your current role in recovery and at the OED. Can you tell us, Pamela, um, from your vantage point, how has the pandemic uniquely impacted BIPOC owned small businesses and, and what has been OED's response? Thank you for having me, DM, and thank you for the question. Um, OED had, has always been focused on um, supporting small business. Um, small businesses, like Jackie said, especially Black and Indigenous and people of color, they employ, they not only employ, but they employ people that look like them. They're a huge economic driver for the city um, and, and, and for cities across the country. So we have always um, focused on stabilizing small businesses. We have various grants. Um, we have technical assistance and support for small business in general. However, the pandemic greatly exposed a digital divide amongst small business owners um, in, in the majority. It, um, we, we serviced, um, we were able to provide um, stabilization grants, um, services, technology grants, um, technical support, because a lot of the BIPOC small businesses couldn't get access to or didn't have the means to get the federal funding. And so we filled a large, large gap. Um, last year, we, we gave out 1,400 stabilization funds, and we normally would do about 35. So thank goodness for the federal stimulus money to help businesses like Jackie and other BIPOC businesses. Um, we also provided a really unique program to close the digital divide where we worked with the Urban League of Metropolitan Seattle, and we um, took some students from Garfield High School, and they took a um, web website design program, thanks to Comcast <laughs> and your support. This was a really great uh, public-private partnership. And these young people were um, paired up with 16 um, um, black and uh, black businesses, small businesses, and they were able to create websites or update or um, improve, enhance the websites of these business owners. Quite a few of them were restaurants. And so these restaurants were able to stay in business because of this program and the funding that Comcast provided. So the young people were able to design a website, hook the business up with, you know, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and, and those businesses are in business today because of that program. So we are trying to um, really focus on the digital divide amongst small businesses, and especially in the BIPOC community. And working with a fantastic partner like Comcast makes our job a lot easier. <laughs> and we can't thank you enough for your support um, in, in our community. Oh, thank you. And I was trying to give Jackie shout outs for her business, but thank you for the shout outs too, Pamela. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of along those same lines, Pamela, why do you think addressing digital equity gaps for businesses and workers is, is so critical? And, and how does this connect if, if you think that it does to the way that the economy will look like in the future? Well, there's a clear and uneven access to resources in our city and cities nationwide, particularly when it comes to distributing needed resources <clears throat> throughout communities, and especially communities that have been marginalized and underrepresented. Um, too many owners, uh, too, too many BIPOC owners are finding it hard to secure, you know, uh, basic access to loans from a regular bank, let alone during the, the um, pandemic. And so um, the, the digital economy or the digital growth that we've seen in the last, you know, five to 10 years and, and the growth that we'll see in the next five to 10 is, is substantial. And if we don't get our BIPOC communities uh, e better than equal access, we we're talking about equity here, um, they won't survive. I mean, across the board, I, uh, in the African American community across the country, 40% of businesses went out of business. Thank God Jackie's still in business and she's a new business owner, but think about that. 40%. Now, black business 
owners hire black people, think about how many families are unemployed because of that. So it, 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 it is crucial that we um, really focus our, 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 our investments, especially in this new economy, um, on the BIPOC communities. Well, thank you, Pamela. I fully agree. And, and Jackie, just to pull you into this conversation as well, I mean, um, I remember you sharing stories before about some challenges in accessing the same resources. And could you tell us a little bit more about that, what your experience was like trying to connect to the, the loans and grants and all these different opportunities that apparently were out there for small businesses? Right. Um, I spent um, the better part of 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours a day, um, applying for loans, grants, uh, unemployment, and for three and a half months, nothing came through. Um, I uh, my first funding came from the city of Seattle. I was uh, an um, an awardee of the stabilization grant, and that stopped the bleeding. That's that stopped the, the bleeding for me. However, I knew that there was so much more that I needed with back rent piling up and uh, having to get ready to reopen and not knowing when that was going to happen. And so for me, um, applying for the, the PPP and the unemployment, that was probably the most stressful time in my life. Um, and the bank, my bank that I was banking with at the time, they took me through the ringer and for 12 and a half weeks, they dragged my application along. Um, I had to jump through so many hoops and only until I compared notes with some of my white counterparts that they weren't getting the same treatment that I was getting. And so I decided to rescind the application and thank God someone from Key Bank contacted me and I was able to get funding my PPP loan done in seven days, seven days. And so that's when I knew for sure there is a divide. What happened when you received the funding? What happened for your business? Well, it, it, um, it allowed me to reopen. I never doubted that I that I wouldn't reopen. I serve a community that before I moved here was underserved. And so for me staying, you know, not reopening was not an option. And I said many times, if I have to go back limping, uh, I'm, I'm going to reopen my business. However, I need to do that. So it allowed me to go back prepared. Um, that is why I was able to work part-time until I could get my full vaccination. This is why I was able to keep my clients safe. Um, I've seen many clients since June and no one has ever gotten sick at 617 Salon. So. That's great news. We hope that continues too, especially recovery effort as well. Thank um, you. Yeah. And Pamela, I mean, what do you think about sort of what Jackie is sharing here in terms of what it's like for small businesses, particularly BIPOC owned small businesses to access these kinds of resources. And, and of course, OED has several different programs that businesses can tap into and help on. How did that inform OED's response? Knowing that there's challenges just to, to get a hold of some of these resources and know about them and apply for them. Right, we um, definitely had to ramp up um, in staff um, and we um, have our materials translated into several languages as well and we have bilingual staff. Um, our small business advocate team um, are, are embedded in the community, the neighborhood business districts, and they um, did a lot of hand-holding and um, um, really encouraging people to apply for the stabilization grants and, and um, like I said, providing technical assistance um, with um, mo moving forward on applications. You know, we had, um, through our small business stabilization fund, digital bridge, we created shop your block, point of sale system programs and others through the Office of Economic Development to ensure that equal access and resources were available to BIPOC um, business owners. Um, we also are continuing to work with key partners from across the community to get more resources and support. So um, took the mayor on a walking tour, um, got to meet Jackie and some other small business owners in the downtown community. 
Um, we're working on, through the recovery work that uh, we're doing at OED, we're working on getting some activation done in neighborhoods um, throughout the city to kind of jumpstart businesses back. Um, we were able to provide um, the personal protection equipment to several several businesses at no cost. Um, it's just we have to really be key and focus on small businesses like Jackie because they are the economic engine to the to the to the city and to the really the, the country. And I think people don't realize how important small businesses are on Jackie's scale. I mean, she's got 200 clients plus that she serves. And um, again, she she took the risk and opened a salon in downtown Seattle. And, you know, there's not very many uh, black owned businesses in downtown Seattle. And she's got folks coming down, down to see her. I'm going to be a new client. I keep telling her I'm coming to see her. Absolutely. Um, That's right. 617 Salon, everyone. 617 okay, salon. 617 Salon. <laughs> yes, right, right. And it, 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 it's real frustrating, though, to sit, you know, where I sit and see um, you know, small businesses like Jackie get denied access to grants or, or federal funding or unemployment and just what her bank took her through is most, most businesses would have gave up and quit, but not Jackie. She has the tenacity. I love seeing that. And we see that in a lot of small business owners because a, a lot of them that didn't have websites, right? They were still trying. Um, like I said, the, the, the digital bridge program, um, with uh, the students, we're gonna we're, actually applications are open now. We're gonna we did 16 businesses. We want to do 60 this year. So um, get on get, go online. Oh, eight office that can only do development and, and apply for um, um, that that um, really great grant. And what that does for the young people, especially young black um, youth, is it shows them business owners like Jackie and the tenacity that they have, and they can see themselves in that business owner. So they they too can truly can be an entrepreneur. It's like setting up a role model, role model mentorship program. Um, so it's really important. And again, you know, working with the Urban League, um, Comcast, City of Seattle, um, we're able to um, put out some really um, great support systems for small businesses. Um, we, again, the technology aspects of it is just, it's, it's paramount. And again, the pandemic really exposed not only disparities in health care and income inequality, but definitely a digital divide. Um, you know, so many young people are at home having to go to school, don't have tablets. And so, you know, further put, you know, the BIPOC community behind. So we have a lot of catching up to do. And in order to do that, we have to all work together um, because we are all interconnected, interrelated, therefore interdependent. We have to do this. Um, together. So public private partnerships, philanthropy, um, um, private business, um, big business, small business, individual businesses, we all have to come to government, government, um, definitely um, nonprofits all come to the table and, and work towards this common goal of equity. And we can't and we and what what I always say is, we, we all can't live in optimality unless everyone is in optimality. And so we have a lot of work to do around that, especially in the BIPOC community with income inequality and now this digital um, divide that we're experiencing during the pandemic. Yeah, thank you, Pamela. We sure do have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and you just touched so beautifully on how critical partnerships are and public-private partnerships as well. And especially now there's, in these times of this division, it's it's even more essential to you know, be so mindful of preconceived notions that we have of different industries and people and um, businesses, big and small, and um, in favor of change and working towards solutions. And we hear about public-private partnerships all of the time. This partnership between um, City of Seattle Office of Economic Development, with the many chambers that we work with, with Comcast over the last year. I mean, I think this is. These are really great examples of staying close to the field, hearing from people, hearing directly from small business owners and nonprofits that are in this space. This is their day to day and hearing from them, what do they need? And then crafting our programs around them to embrace them and give them as much support as possible. Um, I think these are really great examples of what we've done together. And I just wanna kind of bring it back to Jackie for a moment too, is as we, as we begin to hopefully recover and it's a hard fought recovery, but what do you want to see happen as we move into these 
another phase of, of this pandemic and, and people are starting to, to come out more and hopefully go to your salon and droves, um, what would you like to see happen? I, I want to see um, just some fairness when it comes to the distribution of the funds. I have spoken to many business owners, um, some who are still in business, some who are hanging on by thread. And I have some friends in the industry who had to close their doors. And um, it's, a, it's unfortunate. So for me, I would like to see um, a, a business incubator where we could go as business owners and get short up so that because most of us don't understand that be, knowing how to run a business and knowing my craft are two separate things. So for me, I was fortunate when I opened my business because I had a family member who kind of stood in as my business coach, but everybody don't have access to that or can't afford that. And so if we had some place to go where we could learn how to run a business, we know our craft, but I can, I can do hair with my eyes closed, hands tied behind my back mm -hmm. that for 20 years, but to learn how to run a business, that is what helped me get through that first couple of weeks during the pandemic. I had a, I had a good database. I had, I, I understood the power of social media and I knew how to pivot. Now, I didn't think I was going to have to pivot within, you know, like one day I'm working and one day I'm not, but I, but I, but I did it. You know, I did it. I want everybody to have that kind of freedom and that kind of um, help so that we can learn how to be successful business owners, not just for one generation, but for generations to come. And DM, I, I'd like to add to that. Um, so what Jackie is speaking to is is really the the equitable investments around recovery. Um, the, the city of Seattle has um, funding, a um, hundred million dollar fund that um, Mayor Dirk, Durkin so generously put in the budget and city council, and mm -hmm. in ensuring that that money goes into the all all communities, but especially in the BIPOC community. Um, and that the federal dollars that we get, again, it's, it's, it's not just about spreading the, the, the peanut butter evenly. You got to have, have a little bit higher when it comes to, um, businesses that have been traditionally historically, um, you know, priced out of downtown Seattle or certain business districts. And our goal, one of the goals of OED is not only to support existing businesses like Jackie, but expansion for her, if she decides she wants to open another salon, expansion, that that incubator um, business um, idea is phenomenal. Um, we are definitely looking at that because it is time. There's gonna be a new industry, you know, around with 5G and there'll be new um, creative industries that are gonna crop up because of the pandemic, right? Um, gaming is real big. And so we want to be able to ensure that Black and Indigenous and people of color have access to this new industry uh, or the growing industries, um, the growth industries. And it's, it's our role in OED to ensure that happens along with other city departments, the Department of Early Learning and Education, ensuring that we have young people that are going into trades or going to school and getting their degrees in a, in a, in a growth industry that they're gonna be able to get jobs. And so being able to connect young people there's a Seattle Promise program where they go from high school to Seattle Central College, get their AA degrees for free. If they do that, we want to make sure they get an AA in an industry that, that's, going, that's going to need that craft, that talent, that skill set. Or if they decide to go on to the University of Washington and get their four-year degree, that they're getting it in a growth industry like technology, like the healthcare field, um, they're, they're manufacturing and industrial, um, maritime. Those are all... Um, growth industries. And, and another huge growth industry is construction. The cranes didn't stop across the country. They did not stop. So we have to ensure that the workforce is there, right? And, and to the workforce, even the folks that lost jobs, service workers, retail workers, uh, restaurant workers, the ability to get those folks retrained 
um, or back to if they want to stay in their industry to get them back into that industry. So it's it's imperative that we do this work um, diligently, eyes wide open, and we do it through an equitable lens and with a race and social justice uh, framework. And we have to do that. That's the only way we're going to get that equity that Jackie said. And for the, especially in the black community, that will help with generational wealth because not only did we lose 50, 40 percent of African American businesses, black home ownership is under 50 percent for the first time since the 50s. And so more black people lost their homes than other um, communities of color. And so again, it's uh, ensuring that we are creating um, services and programs that will um, stabilize the black community and enhance it and leave a legacy of generational wealth um, for the for the coming generations. It's, it's imperative. The time is now, the urgency is now, and we have this creative economy and um, this technology economy in the Northwest and we need to seize it. But we ha also have to ensure that the com through community resilience, the community has access to equal access or better access to other programs and ser services for stabilization. Beautifully said, so much truth being spoken here um, in, a, in a relatively short session, um, so much power packed into this conversation. I wonder if you know, we think about the folks that are probably um, watching this session right now, listening in on this conversation. They're folks from many different industries, backgrounds, histories. But something drew them to this session um, and they're interested. What is, what would you want to say to folks? What do they need to know from this conversation? You have a chance to speak to several hundred Seattleites and Northwestern folks, um, I don't even know what we call them now, North Pacific Northwest folks. Um, what do they need to know about what you see happening in the community, what you see happening for small business owners, what you see happening in the BIPOC community? If there was a takeaway you wanted them to have from this conversation, what would that be? And I'll, I'll continue with Pamela and I would love Jackie for you to chime in as well. That um, really this, the, the opportunity is here now and to seize on that opportunity and definitely um, come to the Office of Economic De Development. And when we, you know, find this entrepreneurship center, you, you come and support that. That has to happen and that, that, that can happen community driven. And I, I'm so um, blessed to know Jackie because I know she's going to help drive that. Um, but that there, there is support out there, there are services and programs out there we want you to come trust us, City of Seattle, Office of Economic Development, and all the other city departments. We have a mayor and city council that care about the community. Um, we have a caring and loving community. And um, again, we have to join together in, 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 in support of one another in order to create a more equitable um, recovery. So we, we talk about where we were in a response um, when the pandemic first hit. Now we're in recovery and we'll get to revitalization, but we want to put equitable in front of those three R's. So we want to have an equitable response and equitable recovery and an equitable revitalization and give, like I said, better than equal access to the BIPOC communities. No, I'm serious about this work. I, I traveled to, I came back to Seattle to do this work because I love this community and I love um, the people and, and I know that we're, you know, Seattle is held up as this grand city all the time, but our our um, our divisions are, if not greater than other cities of our size, um, with our communities of color. And and I want to be that first city to really knock that down. And I think we can, I know we can do it. Not think I know we can do it. But we have to do it working together. And therefore, to show people we are interdependent, interrelated, and they're. Or inter, or, sorry, we are interconnected, interrelated, therefore interdependent. We can't do it alone. So the BIPOC communities cannot do it without the majority, you know, the people that have the power, the banks, like Jackie's saying. And, and they have to know that, you know, we love and we want, you know, great education for our kids. We want great transportation. We don't want to have polluted water and live in, in lands that are, that are um, EPA certified that we want, you know, access and equality for, um, you know, the enjoyment of life for all across the board. So 
and uh, continue to support businesses like Miss Jackie's. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to, to the future. I really am. It's it, it, it's, it's um, they say shoot for the stars, shoot for the stars and the moon and the sun at the same time. Well, we're so glad stop. to have you back. We're so glad to have you back in Seattle. Thank Please you. again. Um, <laughs> and with that, thank you, Pamela. And, and Jackie, what about you? I want to encourage um, people in, in the BIPOC community to come to downtown Seattle, come to the city. No matter how tough this pandemic was, I would not have done this anywhere else. I wouldn't have wanted to do this anywhere else. The support that I've received from the city, from the mayor, and I'm I'm not kidding when I say this. When Pam says that they are here to help and that this is going to happen, I believe I hang on her every word. And so I want to see more people who look like me opening businesses in downtown Seattle. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful area. I have no regrets. Um, so come down, open a business. It's fun down here. It's always live and moving and shaking. And now that people are coming back, it's it's returning to that beautiful city that I moved to almost two years ago. That's great. That's a great, that's a great call to action. If I ever heard one, thank you. Jen. And with that, we are unfortunately out of time. We could have spoken for another couple of hours. Trust me, I was there in the rehearsal. We could talk for a lot longer than this. Um, but thank you so much to Pamela and Jackie for speaking thank on the panel today. Thank you to the Crosscut Festival for organizing these important conversations. Comcast is a proud sponsor, been a longtime sponsor for the Crosscut Festival since the beginning. You can learn more about all of the efforts you heard today um, in the session at the Crosscut Festival event 